very interested in terms of this. This is actually going to be awesome. All right. So anyways, I don't know. I'm just so tickled. All right. Number <laughs> one, Siam, 1851 to 1910. All right. Okay. Very fascinated by Thailand, especially 150 years ago. Anything Asian, probably 150 years ago. What a world. What a what a what a fascinating world that must have been. So here we go. The word severed. Now, Carla, do you know what severed means? Yes. Oh shit, yes. Uh, hey, hey, okay. hey. So what does the word severed mean? Vocabulario question. Something like hard. Oh, no, something <laughs> separated. Like, okay. Like like a split. That's right. So what out of A, B, C, and D rescue? No? No. I like to do process of elimination. Technique number okay. one. Make it so easy we'll be to A. A, cut off. All right. So we know what it means. Okay. But if we look at this sentence, it says the old local ruling families then were severed. So the families were severed from their traditional context. Okay, now check this out. Severed, we could also look at local rulers could no longer protect their relatives and attendants. And with the ending of 1905, the practice in forcing farmers to work part-time for local rulers. The rulers no longer had a regular base for relations with rural populations. So basically they had to do this, they can no longer do this. So that sounds like a separation. This is how you can make sense of the context of the sentence, all right? On the course, you're going to see a lot more, okay? okay? Do you recommend it to read everything before? Absolutely or not, absolutely okay. not. And this is what I'm going to be coaching you very briefly. You're going to see it in the course. It's going to be far more in depth, but I don't know what it is. Carly, you had a tutor before, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of tutors who say you gotta read, mother. No, she oil. was like, no. she was like, you have to read everything, oh, and man. I don't have time to read. Look at my face. <laughs> okay, I don't know what I, know. The, I don't know what the fuck these people are talking about. Man, even if you read everything, you're gonna go to the answers, and you will have already forgotten what you read. Ooh, for sure. For the sure. only time you're gonna read is when you have to put it into your own words and those are the inference questions, but still you're not reading, you're scanning. You're getting, obviously, and you're gonna see because these paragraphs, oh, we haven't done writing just yet, okay? But with the writing, with these paragraphs, it's always the thesis, the main idea and examples, okay? So what we're going to do, we're gonna look at a different approach, a different approach to understand the mm -hmm. inference questions, which are going to be a little bit tougher and you will get the coupon to go into those inference questions too, okay? It's like a 25 minute video in regards to that. However, that is the only thing where I tell you to go to the paragraph first before you even look at the answers. Because what's gonna happen, you need to put the paragraph into your own words. Sometimes it's not exactly. even a paragraph. It's a little simple key word. So then you're going to go to the keyword. You're going to look at the sentences in and look at the sentence before and after. Put it into your own words. That's all you have to do. You're not going to, you, you don't give a fuck about the thesis. You don't give a damn about the supporting detail. We only care about the sentence it's in, before and after. I'm going to be showing and you that after. here. All right. It's okay. time to unlearn the ridiculousness of other folks. Boy, they don't know what the hell they talking about. Okay. And this is okay. why I'm glad you found myself Brown Jesus. Okay, you found brown Jesus because I'm going to steer you in a good direction. All right, and so <laughs> here we go. Let's do it. Question numero dos. An now, exception. Set questions. What I like to do is I like to grab the keywords and then plug them into the reading. Okay, we're not going to the reading. That makes no fucking sense to go to the reading first. No, we're looking at here. Siam's old ruling families changed in all except, so we're looking for one change that did not happen. So what I do, I grab the keywords out of each of the answers and I plug them in. So here we go. Incomes reduced. Income. And so I go to the paragraph and I look for something in regards to money and it is right here. These families were put, oh, I'm sorry, pensioned off, given a sum of money to live on. 
or simply had their revenues taken away or restricted. Okay, so the ruling families, these families, their incomes were reduced. Now, either they were given a lump sum of money or they had it taken away. It has nothing to do with reduced. Reduced is going from 100 to 50. Here, it's either uh -huh, but 100% it, or zero. But it restricted, uh, it doesn't mean that, that it's reduced. Exactly. It means they have lost access to. Uh -huh. So I'm going to put a star in my head next to A because it kind of scares me. Okay. okay. It kind of scares me. So let's look at B. Their sons were posted as district officers in distant provinces. Here we go, word for word. Their sons were enticed away to schools for district officers, later to be posted in far away provinces. Now, it okay. says the sons were posted as district officers in distant provinces well for the most part i kind of like b b is okay b is but okay. that, exactly that what is not an except exactly we're looking for the except and that except yes, more than likely i like a so here we go okay. now we're going to go to selling of the land they could sell land that belonged to them traditionally so does this say anything about them sailing, selling land? Had a regular rural populations, sever their traditional context. Uh-oh, I don't see sell anywhere. All right, so maybe. a little scared. It says nothing about selling land that belonged to them. It says nothing about selling land. I see that nowhere in this paragraph. So now... I really like C as an answer. I like C exactly. as an answer more than A. Now, remember, reduced does not mean restricted or given money. However, C is a very bad answer, meaning it's a very good answer. I mean, a very good answer. Exactly. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean. They had less control over rural populations. Now, it says here, the rulers no longer and had a regular base for relations with rural populations. They had less control forcing them into farmers, to be honest with you, these not no, letters, there's somewhat of a mention. So I'm looking at C or A. Indeed. I'm going to go with C. Answer is C. C. You see how I okay. did that? So what I did. And usually, usually the answer um, are going to be like that, like, because you were reading like in order. Exactly. So usually the days come like that in order. That's right. In order. And in most times, most times, to be honest with you, most times when it's in order, it's just one after the other. Okay, or right. it's okay because we're just looking at the keywords. Look at A, incomes reduce. I look for something in regards to money. Boom, found it. B, okay. district officers. Here it is, district officers. So what I do, I plug those answers in and I confirm whether or not it is true or false. Okay. They could sell land. And basically, so basically, you didn't read. I didn't, didn't read, read a the motherfucking whole thing. I didn't read a goddamn thing. Okay? okay. So these tutors, okay, it's time to unlearn and relearn again because you're wasting time reading. By the time you're done reading, Carly, you're going to forget everything you read. Yeah, for sure. Okay, you're going to forget. You're going to be like, what did I just read? I don't know. And then you're going to go back to the paragraph and read again. Mm-hmm. No, no. And I have only 18 minutes <laughs> for each minutes. one. And if you have 38 to 42 questions in one hour and you spend five minutes on an accept, you're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So please keep that in mind. All right. Oh, so here we go. This is good. According to paragraph two, which of the following was true of Siam in 1905? I look for the number 1905. And then this is what I'm looking at here. So what is true? All right, mm -hmm. so here we go. It was complex in 1905, the situation. There were 35,000 villages in Siam. Holy shit. Can you imagine? 35,000 villages mm -hmm. in the country? That's insane. This was probably a large increase over figure of two. Okay, all right. Two decades, who cares? Difficult to imagine, uh, but Siam's central plain, the late teenager, nowhere nearly as densely settled as it is today. 
obviously, because Bangkok houses more than 10 million people. Basically, I would say about 15% of the overall population of this country. Insane. So here we go. Going into, there was still force closely surrounding Bangkok. That's correct. Where I live right now, it was pure forest. Now it's pure suburbia. All right. And to the last, mm -hmm. see, you see that, that prior information, I got to know what the hell is going on. You know what I'm <laughs> And so, and even at centuries end there, there were wild air elephants. There still are. And these wild elephants literally kick the shit out of people. I swear. It's like on a weekly basis, someone is always dying. And it's because people like putting big metal spike shackles on the feet of the elephants. So when they actually come loose, they end up saying, fuck you, bam, trunk. And they stomp them out. No bullshit. It's a true story. So let's keep it going. Oh. Tigers. Yes, there are still tigers in Khao Yai, roaming the countryside, only 20 or 30 miles away. That is scary as fuck. Okay, because in Indonesia, these tigers go into towns and they eat people like no bullshit. So anyways, this is what <laughs> happens when you expand your villages into the habitats of some crazy motherfucking animals. So in mm -hmm. that, what was true about Siam? Well, first... 30, 35,000 villages, okay? Second, not as densely populated as Bangkok today. Third, there were forests surrounding Bangkok. Fourth, people live very close to these wild elephants and tigers. So in knowing those ideas, let's plug it in now. Its urban population began to migrate out of the cities and into the country. Bullshit. That's the opposite. There were 35,000 villages. Now, Thailand, Bangkok is densely populated, but not before. Bangkok is not a so damn thing before. B, its central plain was almost as densely, densely populated as it is today. Wrong. 35,000 villages, people. No, 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 no. Okay. Now, this is probably a large increase over the figure even two or three decades earlier. It is difficult to imagine, but Siam's central plain in the late 1800s was nowhere near. Here it says was almost as densely. Uh, uh -huh. Opposite. As opposite. today. Except. It was so rural that wild elephants and tigers sometimes roam Bangkok. No, they roam 20 to 30 miles outside of Bangkok. Okay, I didn't wake up and there's a fucking elephant smacking people in the face. Okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, it had many more villages than it did in the 18th. That's true. I think D is the only one. That's it. Good job. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how you break it down. Now, I know according to paragraph two, you're gonna have to find it out because when I look at 1905, I kind of do what I do for inference questions by scanning the information, by confirming. 35,000 villages, okay? The central plain, not densely populated as it is today in Bangkok. Forests still surrounding Bangkok. Elephants and tigers 20 to 30 miles outside. Those four, I said, okay, That's the I key. have it in my head, go to the answers. And I was able to say, nope, nope, hell no. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Okay. All right. You're going to figure out what is good for you. All right. Let's go to number four. Ooh, the phrase rice deficient right. portions. Ouch. What we're going to look at, we're going to look at this first. First, the opening of the kingdom to the full force of international trade by the Bow Ring Treaty in 1855 rapidly encouraged economic specialization. That's a positive. In the growing of rice, mainly to feed the rice deficient portions of Asia. Now, check this out. They specialized in growing rice. Why? Because rice deficient portions in Asia, it sounds like a negative, right? If you don't know what rice deficient means, well, they ended up encouraging the economy and specializing in growing rice because China and India did not have rice, meaning they, yeah, rice deficient means they did not have rice. So that's why they used the Bow Ring Treaty. The parts mm -hmm. that do rice, the parts that do not have enough rice, I love B. See, the parts B. where rice is grown, the parts that depend primarily on rice, B, answer. Good job. 
Okay. So that's what I did. So rice deficient portions is just like a vocabulary. I know what deficiency means. It means lack of, but I want to- Yeah, but we need to know why. Yeah. Yeah. So some people are just like, oh, well, I'm not sure what deficient means. I'm going to go to the sentence. I'm going to look at the positive of what the Bow Ring Treaty did. And then the reason why they did it was to <laughs> kind of help because they had to feed parts of Asia, such as India and China. Boom. So this was enabled to help them with this, meaning India and China did not have rice. They needed rice. This is why the treaty was created. Excellent. Okay, Excellent. I got it. Okay, so here we go. Para full tres mentions Another excellent. as signs of economic growth, except, okay, so here we go. All of these contributed to economic growth, except now A, B, C, D, and increase, 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 increase in the price of rice, amount of rice leaving Siam, nutritional quality of the quality. rice grown, amount of land used for rice production. All right, so here we go. This is going to be a little crazy because you're going to have to plug in this information. All of this you see is just about the kilos and stuff like that. Now, it says the area planted in rice increased from 230 to 350,000. This growth was achieved. Oh, so that's a positive. So D is good, but there is one that is not good. And I think it's A or B because the price of rice, let's see if it remained constant. Uh, price, price, price. I'm looking for money. You see money? No, anywhere? I think it, I think it's A. Yeah, well, yeah, because I don't see money anywhere. How about the amount of no. rice leaving? Well, yeah, because they helped India and China, right? And so obviously they had to have made money from that. It doesn't say anything about the price. So and you see, you see at the end, it say that um, the collective decision of thousands of it, the thousands, hardest part. thousands of peasant families to expand the amount of land they cultivated. Uh huh. Exactly. It's later A. It's got to be A. It's got to be A. No, 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 no. I want to know. Okay, so it said that first and foremost, it's saying that it's C. But where does it state the price of rice? If you're going to say it's A as the, I'm sorry, C, the nutritional quality of the rice grown. Well, yeah, it doesn't say the nutritional quality and it doesn't say the price of rice either. Mm -hmm. So A and, A, A and C could be the answer. Unless it was said in another paragraph, but no, it doesn't say that. It has to be both A and C because I don't see anything about the nutritional quality. No, I don't, but I don't see anything no. about the price of rice either. Money. So yeah, China, you fucked this one up. Sorry. All right, let's keep it going. According to Apo <laughs> Sam, okay, Sam means three in Thai. Tres! Farming families increase the amount of rice they grew in part by, okay, so farming families increased the amount of rice they grew. How did they do it? It was by expanding the land, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna... This has to be it. The bottom portion right here. This growth was uh -huh. achieved as a result of collective decisions of thousands of peasant families to expand the amount of you land. You see, in the just just uh in the part here and the uh, where say same period the average price per kilogram double i that's the portion that they talking about the price stay with us we'll be right back ready to plug into the future Join myself, Sean Leahy, and me, Andrew Maynard, on Modem Futura, where we explore the technologies shaping our futures. We bring the experts, the insights, and a whole lot of curiosity to every episode of Modem Futura as we boldly go where <laughs> no one else has gone. So join us as we navigate the intersection of innovation and humanity, uncovering the stories that will define our collective futures. 
Subscribe to Modem Futura wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you there. See you then. The average annual volume of rice exported da, 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 over the same period. Oh, damn it. I didn't even see price. You got me. God damn it. If I had seen that. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Okay. All right. Whatever. All right. See, if I had read that, I didn't even read that part. So good job, Carla. Good job. Okay. So here we go. How did they increase the amount of rice they grew? Was it by growing varieties? I didn't see that in the paragraph. Forming collective farms by joining together? I didn't see that. It was about by exporting. Planting rice in areas that had previously remained unplanted? Maybe, because it says they cleared and plant new land. Mm -hmm. I think it's C. C is the answer. Okay. Because D, it says hiring laborers, and laborers isn't was not mentioned once. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay, here we go. According to paragraph four, <laughs> what happened after the government ended the practice of requiring rural people to perform labor for it? Okay, so here we go. The government, I'm guessing they ended the practice. Let's see. Uh, peasants now pay to tax individuals. Ooh, okay. They relatively were freer over the course of the fifth reign. The ties that bound rural people to the aristocracy and local ruling elites were greatly reduced. So this is what happened after the government ended the practice of requiring rural people to just be slaves. I'm pretty sure this is the slave thing. They're they're trying to say labor, but it's actually slaves because one of the one of the uh, one of the majesties, they he ended up ending slavery. And so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so they're basically, the labor that is basically slaves, you know? So anyways, exactly. peasants now paid a tax on individuals instead of being required to render labor. Under these conditions, it made good sense, take full effect, full time at what they have been able to do only part time. Nice. So, this is basically what had happened. The peasants now paid a tax on individuals who were slaves. Okay. And then under those conditions, it made good sense to thousands of peasants' families to, in effect, work full time at what they had been able to do only part time. So what happened? They were able to work now full time, what they only were doing part time. And I'm guessing that brought more money. Previously, because of the requirement to work for the government, grow rice for the market. So like, we'll be no letter B. D, the government introduced a special tax on rice? Uh, no, B as in boy. The rural people spent more time growing rice for profit? I love it. A, rural people became more closely connected to the fuck no. C, the government began to pay laborers who grew rice for it. Ooh. No, peasants now paid a tax on individuals. It says nothing about the government paying anything. B must be the answer. Good job. <laughs> Carla Viloria. There you go. See, see, you see that? That's that's 30 minutes of glory. That is 30 minutes of <laughs> glory. That's how we kick ass. Okay, that's how we kick ass. So let's yeah. go to the next one. Number eight. Which of the following best is oh fuck, I hate this one. Okay, in these types of paragraphs, you have to describe the relationship between two paragraphs. This is going oh, okay. to be annoying as fuck. Okay, let's try it. All right, here go the... What, there's only a four-paragraph passage? Holy shit. Okay, no, right here. These two. Okay, okay. all right, that's what we're looking at, these two. Okay, so first, let's look at the answers, okay? Because it says provides further evidence of the economic growth. Mm -hmm. Paragraph four continues the discussion begun in paragraph three. Paragraph four examines a particular effect of the Bow Ring Treaty. Paragraph four discusses the second of two factors. Now, you have to look at the thesis of both of the paragraphs. In third paragraph three, much population involved opening up new lands, rice cultivation. Two things made it possible. It talked about the two things, okay? 
And this mm-hmm. is all about economic growth, treaty. The treaty actually helped significantly. So let, let it be two factors. So maybe. Uh, yeah, because then they were able to do this because of our second consideration. They were freer. These are two reasons. So provides further evidence, uh, continues the discussion, farming improvements that led to economic growth. Although it was talking about them being freer, examines in particular effect the Bow Ring Treaty. Nope, nope, I don't like C because we're talking about them not being slaves and they can make more money and make more money for themselves. The second of two factors, D, I kind of like D. Farming improvements that led to economic growth, further evidence of growth of Siam. Nah, I like D, but B could be it too. D, good job. Okay. Arla, why did you choose D? That wasn't bad. That was quick. How'd you choose D? What happened? No, because in the first paragraph, uh, they're talking about two things. So, and I start reading all the options in letter D. Yep. Say that this could the second of two factors. So I just related. Okay. Ooh, that was good. So as a nice little way of going about this, paragraph four, paragraph three, anytime you have this and you have to examine thesis and supporting detail, check out paragraph three first, the first, the former. Okay. See what's going on. Two things made possible. And then the thesis of the fourth paragraph, like you said, talked about the second consideration. Those are two factors. So usually a star, I mean, usually the answer will be the thesis of each, right? That's right. That's right. Looking at okay. the thesis and support, it's just like the independent essay. Now, both you and I haven't gotten into that yet, but for everyone else, they'll be like, okay, thesis support in detail. Okay, I already have a general idea of what this paragraph is going to be about. Let me go to the next one. Oh, it talks about the second consideration. So these are two of the things. Oh, okay. Yeah, two factors that talked about the expansion. The freeing mm-hmm. of laborers so they could work full time. And then obviously the economic specialization of being able to grow rice and export it. Boom, two factors. Ooh, okay. Kala, pop your kala. okay. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Ooh, vocabulario question. Disperse. Disperse. Okay, I know the answer, but what do you think? What does disperse mean? It's pray out. Excellent. Hey, that's what I was thinking too. Ay, 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 Carla. Why did you get a low score in your reading? You are very smart. I don't know. I, I don't know. When I was reading, I think I was reading a lot before to start doing the first question. And then I got, you know, like this, like this concept. So give a big shout out to your tutor. Okay. Hey, thank you. I just read the whole thing and I wasted my time. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. Okay. All right. (laughs) Here we go. We're going to stop that. Ooh, compulsory. What does the word compulsory mean? Now, I know what this is, but let's see what you think. Foreign, formal, required, or preferred. Okay. Um, prefer. Oh, required. C. Oh, I okay. Now, I only know this because, you know, in the agenda and school curricula, they would always say, oh, it's compulsory to attend classes. I say, you can make it compulsory all you want. I ain't going. So that's how I remember. Compulsory. Okay, com- compulsory is something that is. Must. It's must. mandatory. Must. Absolutely. Good. Good. Okay. But mandatory. Okay. All right. Pop your color. Okay, here we go. Question number 11. According to paragraph five, which of the following was true of Siam's rural people during the fifth reign? Okay, rural people. So I'm going to go look. Okay, the rural population spread out and grew more mobile. They were more mobile than the previous generation. They were more vulnerable to arbitrary treatment by the government. (laughs) As today, too. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. The people, the farmers, the rice, the government's like, thumb. So sad. Okay. But anyways, (laughs) 
by the early 20th century as government modernization in a sense of caught up, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, the government intruded more and more into village life. I am not surprised. Okay, he, oh, oh, the police came. This sounds like Myanmar, huh? Along with district officers and cattle registration and land deeds and registration for compulsory military. <laughs> Talk about, talk about autocratic, tyrannical. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is terrible. I'm sorry. Anyway, this is the 1800s. So village handicrafts diminished. Oh, uh, so the people couldn't do anything anymore. Because as people bought imported consumer goods like cloth and tools instead of making them themselves. And the variation took shape in rural villages as some grew prosperous and some did not. Now, here we go. This is the question. Rural standards of living improved in the fifth reign, but the statistical averages mean little when measured against the harsh realities of peasant life. So the government fucked the rural people and they said it improved, but the people were still fucked. That's basically what I understand. So, A, okay. they were forced to spend so, of the profits from rice growing on registrations. No, they did not spend money. The government brought the registrations along with bullwhips to smack the shit out of people. All right, B, their lives remain very difficult, even though statistics suggest that the quality of life improved. That's a beautiful answer. It says this right here. This is the sentence. Yes. The statistical averages mean little when measured against the harsh realities of peasant life. See, non-farmers, um, I didn't see anything about non-farmers. So I don't like seeing No. They, mm -hmm. they were more pro prosperous when they were ruled by local elites than when they were ruled by the modern government of the fifth reign. Well, no, because it says here, some grew prosperous, some didn't. So I love A. Exactly. Oh, B, did we say B? Oh, yeah, B. Sorry, yeah, B. Their lives would be very difficult, even though statistics suggest. That's it. And guess what? We didn't even have to read that entire paragraph, huh? We went straight to the bottom. So here, people during the fifth reign, I'm looking for the word, the fifth reign. If I had done that, I would have saved a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, you see that? You see that? Okay. Very importante. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, Oh, here we go. Back to the government bureaucracy. Oh, God. It's as if I don't hear enough of it. The government bureaucracy intruded in village life by, well, it says here. Mm -hmm. right here. Get it more, more. They began to appear. District officers, cattle registration, land deeds, and registration, compulsory military service. That's how they did it. Requiring the people to register their cattle and land. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is a perfect answer. B, requiring the people to buy. Nope. C, discouraging people make it. Nope. Didn't say that. D, encourage more people, people to take up farming. <laughs> no. So no. Let it a. a answer. Okay. Good. You see how? And so in the course, it's going to be more detailed. Okay, I'm going to take you through every little itsy bitsy witsy detail in regards mm -hmm. to strategies and techniques and everything. Okay, <gasps> question insertion quote. Oh, okay, so I hate that one. <laughs> okay, why do you hate it? Why do you hate it? Because I never, I never get it right. Yeah, these are a little bit hard, but you know what? I'm going to look at the sentence and then I'm going to see if there's a reference. Okay, let's look at this sentence and yet. How is it that the peasants were able to choose to expand their economic activity and response to the market opportunities? So this is more of a question, obviously, but we need to look for the answer. How were they able to expand? So I'm going to look in the sentences in terms of how they were able to expand. So here it says, under these conditions, here. it uh -huh. makes sense, take an effect, expand their economic activity. I think mm -hmm. D is perfect. 
And then mm-hmm. if you put it in A, the sentence after is they were able to do so because of our second consideration. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, but don't really like it. Putting it after that sentence, absolutely not. So it's in between A and, and D. I don't like, yeah, I don't like B. I don't like C. It's between A and D, correct. So I'm going to go D first, A next. Oh, motherfucking A. A. Why am I not surprised? I told you that I would not be surprised because when there's a question, it's always at the beginning. I always feel like the rhetorical question should always go at the beginning of a paragraph. I want you to remember that, okay? Okay. Because I was like, well, okay. it is at the beginning. It does seem like they were able to do so because of our second consideration. That's a very good follow-up sentence. So, yeah, not surprised. So you're okay. going to see other ways of doing that coming up soon. Now, this one, Gala, no, you are not going to read. I don't know what your tutors are talking about. All right, they're probably saying, oh, you're going to have to read everything. No, fuck no. We already know the, uh, the idea. What we need to do is figure out what are the important, the most, the three most important ideas in the passage. So it says, during the late 19th century, changes in Siam's power structure had important economic consequences. All right, so we're looking at the consequences of this. Okay, so A, it says population movement occurred and rice cultivation intensified because Siam was more actively involved in international trade. I kind of like A. I kind of mm-hmm. like A. Changes in taxation and the ending of the requirement that people work part-time for the rulers allow farmers to produce more rice for the marketplace? No. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm gonna put B right there just in case, because I know this is a very big idea, but let's see. See, population increases occurred in part because it has nothing to do with population increases. Land became yes. so valuable that villagers had to pay the government for the land that they worked on. It's not about it becoming valuable. It's that the government wanted to press upon their authoritarian ways. And so they Mm -hmm. say, you need to register and fucking go to the military and do this and do that. Because they, they, the, the, the rural people, they had too much power and they were so happy. So the only way to take away that happiness is to go in there and say, fuck you, fuck you, do this, do this, do this, do this. I'm not happy anymore. So (sighs) I don't like D. All right, let's go on to E. Although rural living standards may have improved somewhat, prosperity vary from village to village and government bureaucracy played a great e is a beautiful one absolutely 1000 percent f government modernization in the 20th century resulted in the loss of some freedoms that the rural population had gained from the ooh, i love e i love f so basically you're saying a e f Mm-hmm. A- I was e- looking e- at B, but to be honest with you, I really like A, E, and F, but it could be A, B, F. A, B, E. Mm-hmm. Shit. Okay, so okay. I got B. Oh, no F. That's weird. Well, all right. Well, I did say B. We did agree upon A. We did agree upon E, but F, no F. Huh. modernization in the early 20th century. Resulted in the loss of some freedoms. Well, yeah, that's true. What, did it not? They went in there and they started telling other people, you know, you got to do this and do that and do this. Exactly what's happening today. Whatever. Yeah, but remember that at the beginning, they were talking about the taxes. and Right. So maybe. Uh, loss of some freedoms in the rule. Maybe that's why they let it be. Oh, yeah, but the thing is, it says that the rural population had gained. I don't think they gained anything. It's just the way it was. I don't know. I could be wrong. So, ah, a tricky one. Okay. But that is the thorough rundown of the reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you think, Carla?